What's going on? This is Cam the Instructor. Slayers Candle Bible. We're going over chapter 20, Working Behind the Chair. So, you ain't got to come to class. You can do your lesson from at the house on Facebook Live. That part. So, if you don't catch this lesson, you can go to my YouTube page and get the lesson for today on YouTube. All right? So, we're going to chapter 20, page 732 in this book. Yeah, so due to COVID, we're not doing a lot of um, class at the physical building, so we're doing a lot of stuff online, all right? So let's get straight into it. So we're talking about working behind the chair. So pretty much when you get through with barber school, how you gonna make your money, all right? So you gotta realize you gotta manage your money, all right? Um, discover the selling you advertising. Uh, keep curving clients and expand your client base on your way. So once you do, what, what's the next goal once you complete school, all right? It's a difference between cutting hair in school and cutting hair in the shop. It's a totally different ball game, all right? So we're on page 734. You got describe the expectations of moving from school to work. All right, it's gonna be a different. So let's say making the transition from school to work can be difficult. While you may be thrilled to have a job, working for a paycheck brings with it a number of duties and responsibilities that you may not have considered. Barber school is a forgiving environment. What that mean? Forgiving. Pretty much you mess up in barber school, we might be like, I yeah, I give a chance, he's a student. But when you get to the shop, it's totally different. We ain't got time for no mess ups. We ain't got time for no mishaps because people are paying they actually money. So it's not, um, hey, you a student no more. It's like, hey, I want my service. I'm paying you to do a service. I expect for you to do it. All right? So as a student, you got to come on with it once you graduate. You see what I'm saying? No time for excuses. All right? If you out of school, it's no... No excuse for not being A1, okay? If you'd have been in school a year, there's no excuse for you still not know how to do a ball fade. There's still not no excuse for you not know how to do it even all over. It's still no excuse for you not to be able to dread. No excuse for you not to be able to braid. Like, that's on you. You've been in school a whole year, two years, and you, you slacking, all right? You slacking, all right? So make sure when you get out of school, you prepare to work in the shop. Everybody want to work in the shop, but are you prepared? Hmm. That part. I'll be honest. You got people that's cutting in the house can cut better than people that's in school because they're more prepared. That makes sense? Yeah, it do. All right. So you got to understand the real world. Just in case, you, just because you got license or been in school, don't mean you can cut. All right. So you got to understand the real world. Many Barber and graduates believe they should be rewarded with a high paying job. Performing only the kinds of service they wish to do as soon as they graduate from school. Put a pen in. Performing all the service that they wish to do. Uh, you done went to school, you learn how to do locks, braids, uh, cut hair, sew ins, all that kind of stuff. But when y'all get out of school, y'all only do one thing. That's either cut hair, or oh, I ain't doing no jewelry, I'm just gonna cut hair. Hmm. That's crazy. You done went to school, you paid your money, you done paid all this $3,000, $10,000, however you much paid. Um, to learn all this stuff, you're gonna do one service, okay? You need to make your money in all areas, all right? Every day is not gonna be a haircutting day. Um, on Monday, everybody coming that might just be dreads. But if you didn't learn how to do dreads in school, you can't make that money for that day. So you lost out in that day. Every day is not gonna be a, um, a dread day, you know? So if you didn't go to school and learn how to cut, all you know how to do is dread. Everybody came in the shop want haircut, but you don't know how to cut hair, so you lost out on that day. All right? To Wednesday, nobody might want no locks or no uh, haircuts. They might just want to get their hair braided, but you didn't learn how to braid in school, so guess what? You can't make that money that day. You lost out on that day. You got a lot of barbers that sit there in their own way. They just want to cut hair. 
all they can do, you got a whole license, but all you can do is a ball pay, an even all over. And that's it. Versus the barber that can do dread, braid. Like his moment, his money is tripling times yours. Y'all doing the same thing, working the same hours. All right. Not the top line on that. You continue. Page 736. Uh, barbershop teamwork. If you work in a barbershop, make sure uh, it requires you practice and perfect your people skills. You gotta have good people skills. Uh, in a very much a team environment. So, uh, to be a good team player, you should do your best to practice the following workplace principle. And make sure strive, strive to help, pitch in, share your knowledge, remain positive, become a relationship builder, being willing to resolve conflicts, and um, being sincerely loyal. So you're gonna be a team player, you gotta be loyal. Um, you're gonna work in a shop. That's things you gotta, um, that's, that's stuff you gotta do. Can't be selfish. Everybody gotta play a part in, um, in the shop. That's once you, once you graduate, and you work in the shop, you just can't come in there and be like, oh, it's just me, I'm gonna do it my way. I'm, I'm cutting you way. Nah, doc, it don't work like that. You work in the shop, you work with others, all that good stuff. So you gotta um, be respectful to everybody else, your other team work, workers, you gotta respect them, all that good stuff. Like I said, pitch in, help, share your knowledge, don't be, like whatever you know, help the next teammate out, you know what I'm saying? If he ain't doing something right, share that knowledge, you know what I'm saying? Uh, all that good stuff. All right, moving on. Um, employee status. Uh, when you're working in a barbershop, you're gonna either work um, on salary, commission, or you might uh, do booth. Uh, here at Hollywood, we do booth. We run out booth. All right, but uh, you may work on the commission. Um, and commission is pretty much where everything you make that day, you have to turn it in, and then the boss or whatever pays you out of a percentage of what you cut. That's a commission. Um, booth is when you rent a booth. You might rent a booth or a suite or whatever, and you might just have your own little space, your own um, your own workstation, and then you pay your boss at the end of the week or the end of the month, however y'all set that up. That's um, booth fee. Um, All that good stuff. All right. When you get, when you work and finish school, and it's time to get in the shop. The biggest thing is managing your money. As a barber, as a barber, a new barber, you gotta manage your money. You gotta. Why you gotta manage your money? Because first of all, you're dealing with straight cash money. Okay. What's up, hard worker? What's going on? What's going on? What's going on? So you're dealing with straight cash money. So you gotta learn how to manage your money, okay? So you got people that work on a regular job, they get a paycheck at the end of the week. You a barber, um, you don't get a paycheck at the end of the week, okay? You making your money um, straight, strictly cash. So on Monday, let's say you work on Monday, you make, make $30 or whatever. To you, you might like, that ain't no money, y'all made $30. But you gotta realize at the end of the week, all they gonna add up. So you can't go on Mondays and get your $30 and go buy four for fours and just clean your money, like spend your whole $30 on a Monday. You can't do that. On Tuesday, you can't, oh, uh, you may make $50 on Tuesday. You can't go buy a blunt, a $20 blunt, a loud, and you can't do that. You can't do that. You gotta put something back. You can't do that. So at the end of the week, <laughs> When Saturday comes, then you gotta pay your booth rent. You know you gotta pay your booth rent. You gotta pay your booth rent. So as you pay your booth rent, and then you looking at what you done made for the week, you looking like, oh, Ventara said don't forget products. You gotta buy your products. You're gonna need blades. You're gonna need a blade. Uh, this might break. Ain't nobody think about that. Clients ain't thinking about that. This may break. This ain't cheap. Your blade, you gonna need this to cut hair. So if you drop your clippers and this break, you gotta go to the store and pay twenty five dollars. 
and get you a new blade so you can continue cutting hair. But if you can want bought a loud blunt and spent all your money for that week, you lost out. You're gonna be struggling. So the product, you're gonna need blades, you're gonna need clipper care, you can do dreads, you're gonna need some locks, you're gonna need some clamps, you're gonna need some lock retwists, you're gonna need some all that good stuff. You know what I'm saying? So you get to the end of the week, you ain't prepared, you done paid your book rent. Then you can spend all your money on four for fours and buying loud blunts during the week. When you pay your booth rent, you're going to look at the money like, oh, it ain't had enough. You know what I'm saying? Something ain't had enough. And because you didn't manage your money, okay? So in Barberfield, you're a stylist um, or whatever. That's the biggest part. You got to manage your money. If you're going to make for $30 that day, you might just need to only live off maybe $10 of that. Um, that on that 30. Look, let me take $10 off. I'm going to get me a four for four to eat. And I'm going to maybe put the rest in gas or something. You need to manage your money. And I'm talking about from straight out of barbering school. I'm not talking about that barber that's been cutting for a minute and established. I'm talking about for that person just just graduated, now trying to um, work in the shop and trying to, you know, stay ahead because sometimes you get in the shop you get decent security with you be like man i ain't got the clientele like i want to um i just thought people it ain't jumping over here the shop ain't jumping i'm thinking about quitting and you will get discouraged and you will stop and now you will find you a job working somewhere else you'll find yourself working at amazon working working at mcdonald's you know what i'm saying because you gave up but the biggest thing is managing your money okay you gotta manage your money and uh, I say when you manage your money, you start seeing, you know, the outcome and the benefits of cutting hair until you get there. And even if you got a large clientele, you're not going to see the money if you're not managing your money. Okay? I can't make $100 a day and spend 75 of it. You see what I'm saying? Just because I know I'm making money, that don't mean I'm supposed to spend money. You can't have that too. Well, on Saturday to come, they're going to be my beard today. Friday and Saturday. I'm getting it out back Friday and Saturday. Can't have that attitude because Friday and Saturday might come. And, you know, black people don't like to come to the shop when it rains. What if it rained on Saturday? <laughs> snowed in. Like, what happened this past couple of days? It snowed. Then nobody come out. All right. So you sitting up the shop on your Friday and Saturday, what you think is a busy day. And you ain't made with about 20 $30. So they're not about to come to the shop that day. All right. You got to learn how to manage your money, okay? All right. Repayment of your debts. Let's talk about reporting your income. So um, you want to establish that with the IRS and your Social Security. Because you got to think about when we go to retirement, we work on, you know, strictly with cash. We ain't really, you know, paying a lot into the, um, to the government. So you got to think about what you're going to do when you retire. All right, when you get 50 and 60, first of all, I don't want to be the barber that's 50 and still cutting hair. That's just not going to be camp, all right? That's just not be me. So you got to have a game plan, which comes back to manage your money. You got to save, 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 save if you're a barber because at 50, like I said, don't nobody want to cut no hair. You old, you old. Don't nobody want no old barber, I'm just going to be on it. I don't want no all Bob. You want to keep up with the trends. And if you 50, 60, you probably don't know what the, how to do a WAP. You don't, you don't know what the latest styles are. You know what I'm saying? So, like, you just got to understand that at the age of 50, 60, I need to have a game plan of uh, retirement. All right? So you got to learn how to pay in, pay some Social Security, something. Okay? In to the IRS so you have something going on. Um, all that good stuff. But you learn more about that once you graduate or whatever. All that good stuff. Giving yourself a raise. Let's talk about that. Giving yourself a raise. So once you have taken some time to create, use, and work with your personal budget, meaning manage your money good, you may want to look at ways in which you can have more money left over. So you sit up there, you can manage your money, and you're like, okay, I'm doing good, but I, I still need some more money, okay? So after you paying your bills, you, these are some ways. I'm going to talk about some ways that you can have some more money. So let's say after you work a whole week, you done paid your bills, you done paid your booth rent, 
you done um, bought all your supplies and it's still not enough, you just like, mm, I need my money. What can I do? I'm glad you asked Cam the instructor. I'm going to tell you what you can do. All right, spend less money, okay? If you want to have more money through week, you got to spend less money, okay? Make do what it do, okay? Um, get you a good pair of clippers, get all your product, what you're going to use, and just stick with that. Don't just be buying a whole bunch of unnecessary stuff. You know, sometimes you go to the barber shop and you see some barbers with $2,000 worth of clippers on their station when you only needed $200 worth of clips to do the job. You see what I'm saying? You see where I'm going with that? What you gonna do, What you only can cut one head. What you can do with $2,000 worth of clippers on your station? You got the gold, baby, baby list. You got the black pair. You got the silver pair. You got the red pair. You got the orange pair. You got masters. You got, I am really talking about myself. <laughs> I am. I'm talking about myself. <laughs> you got the Baldwin Clippers. You got the Andes Masters. You got the T Outliners. You got the Walls. You got every pair of clippers that came out. Spending all this unnecessary money when you just get you two basic pair of clippers, some clippers and some liners, and do the job until you can do more. All right? So spend less money. All right, these dollars can be used to invest and save or pay down debt. So you spend less money, you can use that money to pay a bill. Let's think about them $20 blunts you buying. <laughs> That's your water bill right there. Your water bill ain't for $30, $40. You done smoked your water bill up. We got to think smart. Think smart. And some, we need to buy four for fours. And we trying to save some money, we eat four for four. We don't go and get the number 10 at Wink. Don't get the number 10. Get a four for four. All right? If you go to Captain D's, coupon. Coupon. Fish and fry, coupon. That thing on what? $4 with the coupon? You can't eat chilies when you're trying to save some money. It, I'm, 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 I'm trying to help the barbers and stylists here today. I, don't, I can't help nobody else today. But I can speak for the barbers. We're trying to save some money because we work strictly with cash money. Chris said buy groceries. That works. That works. Because eating out, you will spend a lot of money eating out too. So buy you some groceries. Take your $30, $40, $50 every week and buy you some groceries. All right? So you won't have to eat. You're going to eat out. You know you're going to eat twice to three times a day. So just think about you going to the grocery store. And you eating out, going to the restaurant, buying a number 10, three times a day. You can't do that seven days a week. You're going to lose out. All right? You're definitely going to lose out. All right? Some more ways to earn more money, you got to work more hours. You got to put in some time. All right? So one thing I can tell you about, can the bar put in time. All right? I work 24 hours with no sleep. You got to put in some time if you want to get some more money. All right, so instead of working from coming in, working from 9:30 to um, maybe six, maybe you need to come in early. Maybe you come at seven, eight in the morning and get off at eight. Get that extra, that, that extra person that come in, the person that want to come in in the morning time. You may ain't got time to sit in the shop all day. You can you can get that customer. You know you got to put in some more hours. If you want some more money, okay? It's simple as that. You know, y'all want this quick stuff. You want to come in at 9, you want to leave at 1. Mm, four hours a day. You ain't doing nothing. All right? So, dog, you ain't doing nothing. Don't expect nothing. All right? Also, come early. If you want some more money, come early. This shot right here is empty. Come early. All right? Come late. Leave late. You can't come early and then want to leave at 4 o'clock before the sun down. Y'all already packed your clippers up. Go on. No, we still, people still want haircuts at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night. People work. So if you want to get some more money, you got to put some more hours in. Come early, leave late. All right? Increase your service prices. Let's talk about that. The reason why y'all can't see no changes in y'all money is because you're cheating yourself. All right? You're cheating yourself because everybody you're cutting, 
you ain't charging what you're supposed to be charging, okay? I'm going to be honest. I'm just going to say this. You ain't getting nowhere with no $10 haircut, buddy. All right? A lot of y'all capping on Facebook like y'all the barber and got so many clients and y'all charging $10. Well, let me look at this. Let me tell you this. You can cut uh, 10 heads. 10 heads charging $10 is only $100. One dread head is $100 that I do. And you can cut 10. You tired. You is exhausted. Okay? You exhausted for the day. You done cut 10 heads. You ain't made no money. You cheating yourself. Raise your prices. You ain't got to go all out rate and go $30 to $40 like, you know, some other barbers or whatever. Go 15 You know what you work. So charge that. If you think you can get $40, charge $40 for a haircut. If you worth it. Okay? Uh, if you worth 10 charge 10 You know? But don't be complaining about the um, money at the end of the week. You know what I'm saying? You got to increase your prices. And if you're working inside a shop, ain't no way you should be paying no $10 for no haircut. All right? That's for the house bomb. House bomb will get $10, okay? Uh, if you're working in the shop, you need to at least be getting $15 for a haircut. $20 for a man. All right? Don't let them cheat you. And I don't care if these your customers for life. I don't care if you've been cutting their hair for since they was a kid. If they don't want to pay you, cut them off. There's one thing I know. I went up to $40 for my haircut, okay? That was $25. I'd rather lose 50 $20 haircuts and gain $10, 40 Do the math. It's the same money. You're working less and you're getting more. Okay? I was cutting the whole hood. When I first started cutting, I was charging $10. I had to cut everybody in basic hair, period. Like from the high school, literally working day and day and night. The most money I probably made in one day on ten dollar haircut was six hundred dollars. Okay, but I didn't sleep. I worked from Monday night to Tuesday night for six hundred dollars. You know what I'm saying? I cut sixty people. That's because they was all trying to go back to school. It was the day school from the start, they wanted back to school haircut. I cut sixty kids here. I made six hundred dollars. So just think if I was charging my regular price, which was twenty dollars or fifteen. Okay, I cheated myself. All right. So get your money. Don't let these people get you. You know what I'm saying? They'll try to lowball you. Well, I ain't got twenty. Can you do it for ten? Ten? No, dog. You need me. I don't need you. I can cut my own hair. So you can get but ten dollars. Go to the ten dollar barber. Don't go to the $20 bob and you ain't got but 10. Don't go to the $40 bob and you ain't got but 15. Stay in your lane. This is what people got to understand. Clients, too. You got to stay in your lane. If you know you can't afford this person, don't even inbox them. I charge $400 for lock extension. If you know you ain't got $400 to pay for no lock extension, don't even inbox me about no lock extension. You're wasting my time. You're wasting your time. All right? So increase your prices, all right? You need a loyal client base. Oh, put a pin in there. Loyal. Loyal client base. Do y'all know what loyal means? Loyal means I go to a particular barber. I may have another barber, you know, just because I can't get to him or whatever. But loyal is pretty much the same barber or whatever. So you need a loyal clientele. Um... Look for those clients. They're going to come back. going to come back. they come back to see you. Only you. You know what I'm saying? Just the clients you want. You don't want the clients that going to come here and there and there. They ain't your client. All right? A lot of times y'all be like, oh, that's my client, my, my client, my client. Now, if he go to Preston, Keytron, that, that all in, that ain't your client. All right? He for everybody. They said he holds for everybody. He for everybody, all right? So don't even look for that. All right, retail more. We're moving on. Most Bob shops have commission on every product you recommend to sell to your clients. So if you sell more products, you make more money. So what else are you offering besides cutting hair, styling hair, or whatever? You ain't got no product to sell. So every inch of your barbershop should make money. 
All right. So if you got a barber shop the size of Piggly Wiggly, and you just cutting hair, you foolish. You know what I'm saying? You gotta do more. You gotta do more. Okay. So be good, young man. So like I said, all uh, every floor, every inch, every square inch of your barber shop has to make money. You need to have a drink machine in that thing. You need to be selling chips. I don't care. You need to be doing something besides just cutting hair. When you ain't cutting hair, your shop should still be making money. Okay? That part. So, all that good stuff. Seek professional advice. We're moving on. All right? So, if you don't know something, seek out the other barbers. Seek out the other. Y'all be so in competition with other barbers and y'all y'all can't even y'all too got too much pride to even hey hey bro what did you do to do uh how did you get that line so crispy how did you get the locks to lay like that how did you get that style to do like that how if you so in competition with me you ain't even got enough pride to let go to even add cam how did you do this how did you do that we all i mean we all here to help i'm an instructor so i'm giving you the knowledge all right that part, and I'm a licensed instructor. That part, I got L's. Ah, that was a little shade, but okay. <laughs> that was a little shade, but continue. All right. So discover selling you. We moving on. Discover uh, selling you. So once you graduate, you a barber. Now you gotta learn how to advertise. How you a barber and you don't advertise? I got a big, big problem with that. Uh, you want people. You want people to come to you. You always complaining about, well, it's slow. I don't have slow days. Why? Because I post a picture every day on Facebook. Y'all going to get tired of me. Yeah. You're going to see Cam. You're going to see Lock King somewhere on Facebook. Either today, tomorrow. You're going to see You gonna see me any day. Whether I post myself, whether I post picture or clip, where I'm making a status, where I'm going off on somebody, where I'm being messy. You're going to see Lot King somewhere, all right? So, people know about Lot King. People know about Hollywood Cut. Like, I don't have to post no picture, and I'm still going to get clients because people, I've been so consistent over the years that people going to automatic book Lot King. I don't have to post another picture the rest of this year. People still going to book Lot King because I've been consistent in the years. You just starting off. How you expect to get where I'm at or even the next bar level and you don't even want to advertise? You cut hair, you don't take pictures. Who know you cut hair beside you and that person you just cut? I'm like, don't nobody know you cut hair. Don't nobody know you locking. Don't nobody know you can braid. You don't advertise. And social media is one of the biggest platforms. You got 5,000 friends where you can get to a, a maximum 5,000 friends on your Facebook page. Let's, let's do facts. Let's do stats right here. If, just think, if you post a picture on Facebook and you got 5,000 friends, if you can just get 20 of them to share your post or 20 of them, they just expose your picture to their friends. All right? So just think if all 20 of them got 5,000 friends. They just expose your picture of you putting here to their 5,000 friends. I'm like, I don't not, I guess y'all don't think like I think, but that's like facts. One thing I know about me and Esther yes, Thomas, we're going to post some pictures. We're going to be on Instagram. We're going to be on Snapchat. We're going to be on Facebook. Y'all might be like, oh, I'm so sick of them. I'm so sick of them posting pictures. Why he post this? I'm sick of them. I get tired of seeing them. It ain't for you. It ain't for you. It's for that person who ain't don't know that Lock King ain't cutting. Then, then no, we could. I still get people coming to shops. Oh, I didn't. I didn't know Hollywood were here. How long y'all been on the square? We've been on the square seven years, and people still walk in this shop day and say, and will say, um, oh, I didn't know y'all was this. I didn't know this was no barb shop. So that's why you have to constantly advertise. Now, if like I said, going back to the barber students or whatever, they just graduated. Or you just thought, no, you a barber and just trying to get your, you a stylist just trying to get your. How are you going to gain clients if you don't advertise? All right? Oh, I ain't on Facebook.
Y'all be killing me with that one. Uh, I, don't, I don't do social media. Alright, well don't complain when you go in the shop and it's empty. When you go in the shop and it's empty, guess what the response gonna be? Oh, you don't do social media. I ain't know you clear with It's simple. If you want client, you gotta advertise. That part. And you gotta advertise and be good. Just don't be throwing out no crap. A lot of y'all be posting pictures on sh and should be posting pictures. Especially if you starting off. Because you're going to hurt yourself before you, like, you're going to hurt, you don't want to hurt yourself. All right? So if you starting off, make sure you post A1 pictures. You might need to get some professional pictures. Some of y'all got Androids and need to get an iPhone. <laughs> that part. Y'all ain't going to like me today, but I'm trying to help y'all out today. Y'all want to post pictures, you got to post some A1 pictures, okay? Some of my work ain't that dope, but the pictures make it look good. All right, you see what I'm saying? You got to advertise. So, and if you're trying to take a picture and put your picture, you cannot do it with an Android phone. I'm just sorry. You're going to have to get an iPhone. iPhone takes the best pictures. It's proof in the pudding. All right, so you need to upgrade. I didn't get no iPhone 11 or 12 because it was the latest thing out. No, I bought it for my pictures when I take pictures at work. That's what I got an iPhone for. Ain't because I like iPhone so much or put your pride down. Get your iPhone for your pictures. Advertise. It look good. People tell me all the time, Queen, who took your pictures? iPhone. Okay? iPhone takes my pictures. That's how you get advertised. Oh, I'm gonna stay on to y'all. And y'all, I'm not gonna sugarcoat. If you my student, if you ain't my student, I'm gonna tell you the truth. I'm not gonna sugarcoat nothing. Your work suck, guess what? It suck. You need to get better. Some, like I said, sometimes y'all be posting stuff and don't need to be posting it because we're black people and we messy. Black people just are messy. We hurt ourselves, okay? We're going to talk about each other all the time. So we'll post a picture and we'll zoom up. We're going to zoom close. We're going to look at everything, every mistake. First thing, we'll be like, mm-mm, no, he ain't do that right. Mm -mm, look at that line. Mm -mm, it's cricket. Mm, he got too much spray. Mm -mm, he sprayed too much. Mm, nah, I ain't like that. So we, we know we'll kill ourselves before anybody else. We ain't gonna support. All right? And then y'all gotta watch out for some of y'all supporters that still hating on y'all. Mm. Everybody sit up in your chair that you call a client. See, I'm helping my students out now. Because some of these instructors ain't gonna tell you this. Especially the ones that ain't got no license. But we ain't gonna talk about that. <laughs> All right, they ain't gonna tell y'all the truth. Everybody that sit in your chair ain't for you just cause they come to you every week. Make a appointment every week. Be careful for them too. You gotta be cautious of them too. Don't the main ones talking about you. All right? So, I'm just trying to help my students out today, okay? And like I said, you might be a barber student in California. The only stress I might not be giving you, but I'm giving it to you. Like, I'm giving it to, I'm, I'm giving it to you, all right? So, pretty much what have we talked about today, okay? I ain't finna um, keep boring y'all, but we're gonna move on, okay? I got a little bit more, and then we're gonna be in on this, chapter 20. All right? That's another one. You gotta keep current clients and expand your client base. One thing my dad told me, he said, Cam, if you cut somebody here and they don't come back, it means you didn't do a good job. It's simple. You probably thought you killed it. If they don't come back, you screwed them up. That's facts. That's not even just, that's anything. If you're a stylist and you're doing braids, if they don't come back, you messed them up. All right. Um, another way to give clients, send birthday cards. Um, provide constantly good service. I mean, if you cut their hair good this week, cut their hair good next week. Don't slap up. Don't slack up. You know what I'm saying? Keep good, good, do good service all the time. Be reliable, all right? Be respectful. Be positive. Be professional. Ask your clients for email address. All that good stuff. Utilize social media. How many times I got to tell y'all that? Utilize social media. It's in the book. This ain't no stuff. I, I, 
I'm gonna tell y'all stuff out of the book. Get with social media. The book say Facebook. Build your reputation and attract new clients on Facebook. Ain't nothing I didn't told you. This is what this coming out the book. So for y'all, I didn't told you to do, it, and you come back and tell me, I don't do Facebook. I ain't on Facebook like that. Just stupid. I told you to your face. Just stupid. Y'all ain't stupid, but just do better. Okay? Do better. All right, like I said, I'm the instructor that's going to give it to you one-on-one. -on -one, okay? I'm going to keep it real. But like you said, get business card referrals. How you starting off? I ain't got business card personally. Like I said, I think enough people know who Cam is. I still need just a business card. But I can slack off a week or two from business card. But if you just starting off and you... You trying to build a business? Why you ain't got no business card? Get some business card. This the print. Fifteen dollars. Get some business card. You gotta do all this kind of stuff, okay? okay. Um, local business referrals. All right. Um, go to your cigar sh uh, shops, your tattoo parlors, um, other small business. Go to them, talk to them. Be like, hey, I'm the new kid on the block. So on, so on, so on. You gotta open your mouth if you want some customers, okay? Sitting up in there and doing what I'm doing, spinning this chair, you're not gonna get no club customers. And just spinning, looking, and hoping some customers are gonna walk through the door. Nah. It don't work like that. See, y'all talk about, man, it ain't busy. It ain't no, it ain't busy. It's slow. It ain't slow. You know, you just ain't did your part, all right? You gotta do your part to get some customers, all right? Public speaking. Make yourself available for, for us. Public speaking in local groups. Um, be active in the community. Uh, especially organizations for young men and women. Um, all that good stuff. You can get clientele. Okay, one thing we did. I remember I cut the whole North Panola football team for free. It was 60. I said the football team. I meant just the players. But how about the coaches showed up too? Like, really? Like, how can I cut the kids for free, half for free? But the coaches... Y'all trifling. You know what I'm saying? But I went on ahead and did it. I did it. Me, Kevin Lee, we up here. We, we struggle. You know what I'm saying? But what I'm getting at is, even though I cut their hair for free, I had never seen some of them. They had never seen me. Guess what? I still have some of those clients to today. Right? So I cut them for free, but now they pay me every week to cut their hair, okay? I gain new clients. Sometimes you got to work for free. You got to crawl for your work. I mean, crawl for your walk. Some of y'all don't want to. You get out the game. You ain't even got a license. You charging $30 already. Sit down. Stop it. You ain't even, like, you, you got to crawl. Like, you got, uh, 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 uh. come on with it. Like, you got to crawl for your walk. All right? Sometimes you got to do some free services. You got to do some free, you got to do, get, if you're trying to get there, if you're trying to build, you got to do some stuff for free. All right? You can't be like, well, I'm charging $100 for these, but you ain't got but two clients. You may need to be charging 10 Charge you 10 even though your work may be $100. Some of y'all braids. Uh, my braid, 175 Baby, you ain't got but three clients. You may need to charge $20 for your braid. Even though you're braiding better than the Africans. Charge the $20. Get your clientele up. Do you some free work before you can um, get there. All right? Moving on. What's going on, young man? Rebooking clients. So to keep the clientele growing, you got to rebook them. If you got an app. I use the app where they can go ahead and rebook their sales. But another way to keep constant clients before they get out the chair, go ahead and rebook them. All right? So, because most of the time they're not going to do it themselves. So, when you dust the cape off, dust all the hair off of them, clean them up, go right ahead, right then and there, and book them another appointment. So, they on rotation. So, you know you're coming back. So... You ain't got to worry about worry about if you got some heads at the shop today. Um, I do appointments because, first of all, 
I can kind of like plan my day. If I need to leave, I do a lot of stuff. I'm a teacher, I run two shops, so I need to have some kind of organization going on. What's going on, young man? If I know I'm gonna leave at this time, I need some appointments, all right? If I'm just taking walk in, walk in, walk in, walk in, walk in, I can't plan my day like that. Um, so before I even wake up, I already know a spec, a spec how many clients I got. Um, if I need to run somewhere and do something, I can do that because I got appointments, all right? Uh oh. Like I said, rebook your clients, all that good stuff. Alright, so if you do all those stuff that I didn't, we didn't spoke on or whatever, uh, you, you're on your way. I guarantee your business will pick up. I ain't told you no lies today. Um, so I guarantee your business will pick up. So that's the whole um, review on Chapter 20. I'll be back. Like I said, if you missed this lesson, you can go to my YouTube channel at Canada Instructor. And like I said, you ain't got to be a student at my school. You can be a student in the school. And you may then go to class, you know, whatever. Guess what? You can go to my YouTube channel and see the video on Chapter 20. And you caught up. You're like that. The teacher wonder why you come to class and feel past. I, I watch Cam just drop. All right. So I covered the whole lesson today. So that's pretty much it. All right. Peace. I'll be it.